Today we're talking about human sex trafficking, the problem that is across the world and right here in Connecticut. Our guests now are Cindy Martinez and Deborah Walsh from the Heartbeat Ensemble and uh, from uh, Project Turnpike. This is a project that is happening tonight at 7 o'clock at uh, Capital Community College in Hartford. I want to welcome you both to where we live. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. Glad to be here. And also, Raymond Bouchard is here. He's the author of The Berlin Turnpike, a book about sex trafficking in Connecticut and the genesis of this project, Turnpike. Uh, Ray Bouchard, welcome to the show. Thank you so much, Raymond. Maybe you can start with your story, Ray Bouchard. How did you get into this topic, and, and what is this book about? What is in what is detailed in The Berlin Turnpike? I've been uh, working on the topic for about 10 years. This is my second book on the topic, and I'm working on a third now. Uh, this book focuses on a federal trial uh, that took place in Hartford in 2007. Now, you heard Christian Patel talk about the Trafficking Victims Protection Act. This is one of the first trials to be tried uh, under that law. The um, defendant's name was Dennis Paris. He had what he called an escort business here in Connecticut uh, involving girls as young as 14 uh, from local high schools, girls from Vermont, New Hampshire. And so it's the story of that trial and how it illustrates how this crime works throughout the United States, the crime of commercial sexual exploitation. And, and this is something, it has the, the title, The Berlin Turnpike. This is a place that we've all sort of known in Central Connecticut as a place where this happens, and it, it brings some of these stories home. The, the fact that this is happening right now, Ray Bouchard, as we're seeing these stories in, in Vanity Fair, Nick Kristoff and doing what he's doing for the New York Times, it seems as though this is becoming a story that is actually coming home to where people live in Connecticut in a way that perhaps we haven't had in the past. Well, it's been here forever. You know, there's uh, it, the Berlin Turnpike has been around for 100 years. Uh, in my research, I found prostitution arrests going back to the 50s. There's today over 1,200 motel rooms on the Berlin Turnpike. But more so, I'm using it as a metaphor for how that Berlin Turnpike, or a red light district, if you will, now comes into our homes through the Internet, through every online computer, as you heard your former guests be, uh, tell. Well, so Cindy and Deborah, maybe you can talk about how, how the transformation happened from the Berlin Turnpike to this Project Turnpike. What, what, what are we going to be experiencing tonight at 7 o'clock? We are going to be doing a rough draft, a reading of our first rough draft of Project Turnpike. And in the beginning, I actually thought I was going to be writing a play about smuggling Asian women out of Hartford. And I met Ray. We met at a restaurant on the Berlin Turnpike, and he was pointing out where women had been sold to pimps just a few years ago. So it's a years of research and interviews and with uh, former, you know, women who are now in recovery, with former pimps, with uh, social service agencies. So it's, and it, we're asking the audience to help us really shape the story. Uh, yeah, and Cindy, this, this isn't an easy story. I mean, the Heartbeat Ensemble, what, what you do is you tell the stories of the people in this area through their own words. But these are some very difficult stories to tell, I can only imagine. Absolutely. I mean, we try to, our, well, our goal with this piece and all of our Heartbeat Ensemble main stage productions that we keep it as authentic as possible. Um, and so with this one as heavy as a topic uh, already, um, we try to add some humor into uh, the, the script. And, and when you come tonight at Capitol Community College on the 11th floor at 7 o'clock tonight, you'll see one motel room um, and you see the woman coming in and out. Um, and you sort of see the life as it's happening, um, and, and you and we really worked alongside Ray and his book to really bring the play to life. Well, let, can we hear a little bit from sure, from, sure. from the work that you hear? I mean, maybe you can say, if you need to set it up, uh, you you can. But uh, let's hear a little bit. Okay, just briefly, the action of the play follows the story of a new recruit named Andy. So she's beginning to realize she's on the Berlin Turnpike, and she's talking to one of the more hardened workers named Kaz. And Kaz looks at Andy and says, So your old man is the reason why you started using? My dad? Since he died, yeah. I couldn't handle it. It got worse. I started stealing from my mom, got kicked out. <laughs> you got to laugh at this life to stop yourself from really losing it. I'm not doing this. You can keep on. I didn't ask to be here. I'm not a prostitute. Don't fight it. You'll lose. I'll call the cops. Call the cops. They'll let you out in a few hours, and he will be there waiting for you outside the courthouse, and you will go with him again. That's stupid. Why would I do that? Don't end up like Helen. Ask her what was done to her when she told the John that she wasn't going to service him. Now put that phone down. What are you saying? Stick it out? Make the most of it? Do what he says? No questions asked? You ask too much questions. Shut up. I'm getting a headache. And that's my dresser. Close it. You too scared to run? You ever think of... How to get out? 
every day I think about it, that he has everything of ours, ID, social security, birth certificate. Should I jump out a window, run in the middle of the street, beg someone to help me? What? That won't work. How long you been here? <laughs> Longer than most hoes. Ain't sloppy. Been around the longest because I keep his business professional. I ain't no street worker, he tells me. I'm worth more than that crack hoe on the street. Mm. Ray, Ray Bouchard, the stories, stories like this that, uh, that they're reading, they're about their lives being in control of someone else. And that's really what we're talking about here, just the inability yeah. to get out of something that you'd love to get out of. It's called slavery. It's mm -hmm. called, you know, a uh, hundred years ago, uh, John D. Rockefeller commissioned a report on commercialized prostitution in New York City. And the way that report, probably the last good report on this done, describes how it worked in New York City in 1912, describes exactly how it works tonight. The utter control these pimps have over the women and young women uh, in their stable of girls. And, and how the only thing that's changed really is the marketing. You know, it's moved from the street corner now to the Internet, uh, yet it still plays out every week in the back pages of the Hartford Advocate. Well, uh, Kristen Patel talked about the biggest problem that she sees is the the domestic pimp, mm. not the the cartel of somebody who who has a, a number of 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 girls. Yeah. I, how how have you seen this work? Because I'm sure you've seen both of these types of stories. Yeah, and I've seen far more of the domestic pimp. Uh, Dennis Paris uh, was from Connecticut. His brother was just arrested a couple of months ago for doing the very same thing in New Britain. His wife ran the business with him. She was a state trooper. Mm -hmm. So it, uh, it's all domesticated. Uh, the vast majority of it is. Uh, but yet we hear this term uh, is a misnomer, trafficking. We think of movement. It really has nothing to do with that. It's about the force, the fraud, the coercion, or bringing a young girl uh, into this trade and making them their slave. And that, that control is an intentional addiction to the personality of the pimp. Deborah and I uh, spoke with a woman last night who was under the control of this man for seven years on the Berlin Turnpike. And the things that she went through, the videotapes he, ma he, he made of her, seven years, and she's still trying to recover from that years and years later. Go ahead, Deborah. Well, he's still bothering her from jail. Yeah, exactly. He's still harassing her. He's still trying to keep her entrapped. And she is not a young girl, and you know where the resources, Ray, is really trying to help her find resources so that she can stay away. And, and law enforcement does what? Uh, how does law enforcement get involved in this? You, you'd think, you know, you'd be able to go to someone and say, look, this guy, this, he's gone to jail. He's still bothering me. Why not? What's Here, happening? Here's the difficulty. People are not seeing women on the streets so much anymore, uh, walking, actually walking the Burlington Bike on a street corner on Wethersfield Avenue. They're here in the uh, Harvard Advocate, and they, they're, so they're out of view. They're online. They're in a magazine called Extreme Magazine, which is published in Kensington, Connecticut, which lifts escort services. So these calls aren't coming in so much. Police are not getting, unless they go looking for it, do a sting, which is very complicated and very expensive. Uh, then these arrests are not being made. So they're able to mushroom and explode online. The internet also offers complete anonymity for the pimp and the john. Whereas before you had to, you know, wait for a day when the weather was good where someone might be on a street corner. Now it's 24-7. You don't have to expose yourself at all. We're talking with Raymond Bouchard, author of The Berlin Turnpike, which is the uh, a book that is about sex trafficking in, in Connecticut. And it's also the genesis of Project Turnpike, which we're talking about. A Heartbeat Ensemble is doing a stage reading uh, it's tonight at 7 o'clock, the 11th floor auditorium at Capital Community College in Hartford. Cindy Martinez and Deborah Walsh are here from Heartbeat. I, uh, Cindy, how, how do you want to uh, identify with these women as you're trying to create these roles? Can you put yourself in their place in some way? Um, it's it's hard not to. Um, you know, we we took in the testimonies from the Berlin Turnpike book. We've seen videos online, um, interviews, and we actually interview a uh, former prostitute in person. Um, and when you're script writing and you want to bring these voices um, to the to the audience, you the authenticity and and sort of the storyline and the arc, the character, everything has to be in line to to be truthful. 
And but, um, but, but even in just even just the section that you just read, there, mm-hmm. there's a feeling of if, if it was a movie, there's a feeling of wanting okay. to yell at the screen, going just just go just away, run. just run, just run, run away. Run. And you must feel yourself doing that as you're watching these videotapes or reading through these stories yourself. Absolutely, and. Um, you know, it's just not that easy. It's so this this topic, this, these stories are so complicated. There's so many layers that it's hard to tackle in one play <laughs> or one movie, or it's just hard to sort of squeeze it all together and then have an ending. So um, right now, as as this draft is in place for this evening. Um, Right now, the ending is what it is, and you have to come out to see it. <laughs> um, but again, we're we're giving you pieces of these stories of these women lives, um, and we hope to continue to polish the script for our debut uh, next spring, twenty thirteen. Yeah, I don't feel frustrated with these women, girls, and boys because I understand addiction, and I understand where somebody who has been so abused could. There was a line we have. I. I thought he loved me when he hit me. I thought that's what love was. So I really understand what drives someone to stay under the spell of that kind of abuse. So I don't feel any frustration or why don't you get out. What I feel is empathy and more frustration with the services that could be doing outreach and helping people. As far as services, I mean, we can talk about that in just the last little bit of time. We have Ray Bouchard, whether or not it's at the state legislative level or whether or not it has something to do with services that could be provided to people. Are there things you think Connecticut could be doing a better job of? Absolutely. In fact, right now we've introduced legislation in this session, uh, House Bill uh, uh, 5504, which is an act concerning uh, sex trafficking of a minor, to uh, make the publishers of these escort ads, like in the back page of the Hartford Advocate and on Backpage.com, uh, criminally liable for the ads if if the persons within these escort agencies, that's what they call them, they're really prostitution rings, uh, are minors. So we really want to work now. This, this bill's got a good chance of uh, passing uh, within the next couple of weeks here. So right now that's something uh, we're doing. The Hartford Advocate has pulled down their online escort ads and they're just in the print version now. Um, and they, re- I mean, every week. Uh, here's one I'm reading right now. Well, and, and, go ahead. Yeah, yeah we, we are almost out of yeah. time, so I didn't, want, I didn't want to run out of time on you because I wanted to be able to say again, Ray Bouchard is the author of The Berlin Turnpike. Thank you so much. And thank you also to Cindy Martinez and Deborah Walsh. Uh, they're from Heartbeat Ensemble, Project Turnpike, tonight at 7 o'clock, the 11th floor auditorium at Capital Community College in Hartford. Thank you both so much oh, for coming thank in. You. You'll hear more of this play tonight. Uh, Tucker Ives produces our program. Katie Talarski is the senior producer of Where We Live. I'm John Dankowski. Thanks for joining us. Everything of ours, ID, social security, birth certificate. Should I jump out a window, run in the middle of the street, beg someone to help me? What? That won't work. How long you been here? (laughs) Longer than most hoes. Ain't sloppy. Been around the longest because I keep his business professional. Ain't no street worker, he tells me. I'm worth more than that crack hoe on the street. Hmm. Ray Bouchard, stories, stories like this that uh, that they're reading, they're about their lives being in control of someone else, and that's really what we're talking about here. Just the inability yeah. to get out of something that you'd love to get out of. It's called slavery. It's mm-hmm. called you know the a hundred years ago, uh, John D. Rockefeller commissioned a report on commercialized prostitution in New York City, and the way that report, probably the last good report on this done, describes how it worked in New York City in 1912 describes exactly how it works tonight. The utter control these pimps have over the women and young women uh, in their stable of girls. And, and how the only thing that's changed really is the marketing. You know, it's moved from the street corner now to the internet, uh, yet it still plays out every week in the back pages of the Hartford Advocate. Well, uh, Krishna Patel talked about the biggest problem that she sees is the, the domestic pimp, mm-hmm. not the, the cartel of somebody who, who has a, a number of 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 girls, yeah. I, how how have you seen this work? Because I'm mean, I'm sure you've seen both of these types of stories. Yeah, and I've seen far more of the domestic pimp. Uh, Dennis Paris uh, was from Connecticut. His brother was just arrested a couple of months ago for doing the very same thing in New Britain. His wife ran the business with him. She was a state trooper. Mm-hmm. So it uh, it's all domesticated. Uh, the vast majority of it is. Uh, but yet we hear this term uh, is a misnomer, trafficking. We think of movement. It really has nothing to do with that. It's about the force, the fraud, the coercion, or bringing a young girl 
uh, into this trade and making them their slave. And that, that control is an intentional addiction to the personality of the pimp. Deborah and I uh, spoke with a woman last night who was under the control of this man for seven years on the Berlin Turnpike. And the things that she went through, the videotapes he, ma he, he made of her, seven years, and she's still trying to recover from that years and years later. Go ahead, Deborah. Well, he's still bothering her from jail. Yeah, exactly. He's still harassing her. He's still trying to keep her entrapped. And she is not a young girl, and you know where the resources Ray is really trying to help her find resources so that she can stay away. And, and, and law enforcement does what? Uh, how does law enforcement get involved in this? You, you'd think, you know, you'd be able to go to someone and say, look, this guy, this, he's gone to jail. He's still bothering me. Why not? What's Here, happening? Here's the difficulty. People are not seeing women on the streets so much anymore, uh, walking, actually walking the Burlington Bike on a street corner on Wethersfield Avenue. They're here in the uh, Harvard Advocate, and they, they're, so they're out of view. They're online. They're in a magazine called Extreme Magazine, which is published in Kensington, Connecticut, which lifts escort services. So these calls aren't coming in so much. Police are not getting, unless they go looking for it, do a sting, which is very complicated and very expensive. Uh, then these arrests are not being made. So they're able to mushroom and explode online. The internet also offers complete anonymity for the pimp and the john. Whereas before you had to you know, wait for a day when the weather was good where someone might be on a street corner. Now it's 24 seven, you don't have to expose yourself at all. We're talking with Raymond Bouchard, author of The Berlin Turnpike, which is the, uh, a book that is about sex trafficking in, in Connecticut. And it's also the genesis of Project Turnpike, which we're talking about. The Heartbeat Ensemble is doing a stage reading uh, it's tonight at 7 o'clock, the 11th floor auditorium at Capitol Community College in Hartford. Cindy Martinez and Deborah Walsh are here from Heartbeat. I, uh, Cindy, how do you want to uh, identify with these women as you're trying to create these roles? Can you put yourself in their place in some way? Um, it's it's hard not to. Um, you know, we we took in the testimonies from the Berlin Turnpike book. We've seen videos online, um, interviews, and we actually interview a uh, former prostitute in person. Um, and when you're script writing and you want to bring these voices um, to the to the audience, you the authenticity and and sort of the storyline and the arc, the character, everything has to be in line to to be truthful. And but, um, but, but even in just even just the section that you just read, there, mm -hmm. there's a feeling of if, if it was a movie, there's a feeling of wanting okay. to yell at the screen, going just just go just away, run. just run, just run, run away. Run. And you must feel yourself doing that as you're watching these videotapes or reading through these stories yourself. Absolutely, and. Um, you know, it's just not that easy. It's so this this topic, this, these stories are so complicated. There's so many layers that it's hard to tackle in one play <laughs> or one movie, or it's just hard to sort of squeeze it all together and then have an ending. So um, right now, as as this draft is in place for this evening. Um, Right now, the ending is what it is, and you have to come out to see it. <laughs> um, but again, we're, we're giving you pieces of these stories of these women's lives, um, and we hope to continue to polish the script for our debut on next spring 2013. Yeah. I don't feel frustrated with these women, girls, and boys because I understand addiction, and I understand where somebody who has been so abused could – there was a line we have – I. I thought he loved me when he hit me. I thought that's what love was. So I really understand what drives someone to stay under the spell of that kind of abuse. So I don't feel any frustration or why don't you get out. What I feel is empathy and more frustration with the services that could be doing outreach and helping people. As far as services, I mean, we can talk about that in just the last little bit of time we have. Ray Bouchard, whether or not it's at the state legislative level or whether or not it has something to do with services that could be provided to people, are there things you think Connecticut could be doing a better job of? Absolutely. In fact, right now we've introduced legislation in this session, uh, House Bill uh, uh, 5504, which is an act concerning uh, sex trafficking of a minor, to uh, make the publishers of these escort ads, like in the back page of the Harvard Advocate and on Backpage.com, uh, criminally liable for the ads if, if the persons within these escort agencies, that's what they call them, they're really prostitution rings, uh, are minors. So we really want to work now, this, this bill's got a good chance of uh, passing uh, within the next couple of weeks here, 
So right now, that's something uh, we're doing. The Hartford Advocate has pulled down their online escort ads, and they're just in the print version now. Um, and they, re I mean, every week. Uh, here's one I'm reading right now. Well, and it, go ahead. Yeah, yeah we, we are almost out of yeah. time, so I didn't, want, I didn't want to run out of time on you because I wanted to be able to say again, Ray Bouchard is the author of The Berlin Turnpike. Thank you so much. And thank you also to Cindy Martinez and Deborah Walsh. Uh, they're from Heartbeat Ensemble, Project Turnpike, tonight at 7 o'clock, the 11th floor auditorium at Capital Community College in Hartford. Thank you both so much okay, for coming thank in. You. You'll hear more of this play tonight. Uh, Tucker Ives produces our program. Katie Talarski is the senior producer of Where We Live. I'm John Dankowski. Thanks for joining us.